Hi everyone, uh, this is Rachel. I am gonna be showing you how to be doing the plastic yarn weaving for this week's projects. Um, please again, reach out if you have any questions, if you need some guidance or assistance, or even thoughts about how to adjust your project for different ages or whatever. Um, so the things that are going to be in your kit, uh, number one is going to be either like a chopstick or a skewer. This is gonna be used to twirl the plastic bags to make that yarn stronger. Um, then there's also going to be cut up little plastic bags. These are rings made out of plastic bags. You can see my Target haul bag and my grocery bags. And then we're also going to be using a loom. This is a big loom that we got, nice and strung up for you. Um, there's also going to be small looms and I'm going to link a video for um, hand weaving. If you took Alicia's ped class, I think you might have learned this. Um, so there's lots of different options for your site, what your kids want to do, and how much um, flexibility you have in um, letting kids kind of just go off and work on a big loom or really sitting down next and showing them how to do the hand weaving. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to make plarn, plastic yarn. Um, I think the term plarn is funny. I can also, we can also call it magic rope if you'd like. So what you're gonna do is loop and then cinch pieces of grocery bag together. So I'm gonna do it with two different colors so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna take this piece and string it through just the loop. And then kind of like you're wearing handcuffs like this, you're going to take one hand, reach over and grab that other piece, grab down on the bottom and just kind of let that cinch off your, off your hand and it's gonna cinch into a knot. Don't pull too tight. Um, it will break. I've got some, got some examples here. If you pull it too tight, it'll come right apart. Um, we're going to spin it later so that it becomes stronger, but warn kids against, you know, against pulling too hard. So I'm going to show it again. I've got, this is my rope. Now I'm going to take one end and I take a new loop. I'm going to string it through that. And then I always, you can have the kids go like this and then reach over, or maybe I'll show you the other side, reach over, grab that, let this slide off your wrist, pull on the bottom, and then just kind of gently tug it. And so now we've got a longish piece of rope. Um, I would recommend probably 15, 20 lengths. Um, once we spin this and tighten it up, it's gonna get shorter and shorter. Um, so after kids have had a length of rope, they can work together to spin it and make it stronger. Um, so what they're gonna do, one person is gonna grab a chopstick or a skewer, whatever's in the kit, um, and they're just gonna string it like this. Another kid, you, you can kind of, all right, now you two go, go strengthen your yarn. Another kid is going to hold this piece. Let's say you are that person. I'm just gonna have it hold, hold, have you hold it. Um, and then one kid is just going to twirl this and it starts twisting starts twisting the rope so that it's a little bit stronger. See, it's not pulling as much. Um, if I would do that here, it would rip right apart. And both kids can twirl if they want, like this. Sometimes it works too if you just use your finger and you spin and you kind of move the spun parts down the rope. Um, Mr. Shane Mann has a word for this, but I'm not sure what it is. So you just spin and now your rope is nice and strong. After this, kids have a few options to use their plarn with. Um, a lot of this, the term is just over and under and sequencing. Um, talk about kit, talk to kids about over and under and how it creates this really strong pattern. So I'm gonna show you really quick on this loom how I like to teach kids. Um, so I have them pull a string towards themselves and go under and then over and then pull a string towards himself, go under, and then it's over, pull the next string under, pull the next string over, next string under, et cetera. And lots of kids, most kids get this rhythm pretty easy. Um, try to remind them every other, sometimes you'll see skipped ones, that's okay. See, just like that, I just skipped one, whoopsies. And it's okay if they miss it, it's totally fine. And we go under, sweet. And then you can tell them after every turn or every lengthwise, you can kind of push it down, pull the, well, pull the yarn through, just make sure it doesn't come out there, and then push the yarn down, and you can tell them to reverse. Um, so 
under, over. Ones that you went under last time, go over this time. Yes, okay. So we also have some smaller looms. So if kids wanna take one home or continue working on it, I'm gonna throw some yarn into the containers too. Um, into the tubs so that you guys can practice with yarn as well. Weaving is a really good skill and you can talk about how t-shirts are made or how rugs are made if anyone has done weaving before. Um, it's pretty common even in elementary schools to do some sort of weaving and fiber art. Kids love fiber art. They love the rhythm. Um, oftentimes I'll have a kid like just, you know, He's like, oh, this is weird. Or she, they, uh, this is weird. And then all of a sudden they get in the rhythm and it's hard to get them to stop because they love that continuous rhythm of over, under, over, under, over, under, wrap around, etc. cetera. Um, so that's what we've got going on for this project. Let me know if you have questions. We will also send out a video for how to do finger weaving, mainly because I'm not the best at patience. Uh, so <laughs> we'll get you a good video for that. Good luck, have fun, and talk to you later. Bye.